What's up everyone? My name is Miles and this is the Make With Miles channel. Today, I'm gonna be showing you how I made this guitar out of one sheet of plywood. Let's go. I started this build by ripping down a full sheet of plywood into long strips that were close to the thickness of a guitar. After cutting those strips in half, I started to glue them together, making sure they were staggered at a 45 degree angle. After gluing up one of these panels, I did a second glue up off camera. I then unclamped the first one and scraped off the glue squeeze up. I used a sled on the table saw to clean up one of the edges and then glued the two panels together. First I ripped the large panel in half so that it would be more manageable on the table saw. I then set the fence to the width that I wanted the herringbone pattern to be and started ripping the panel into strips. Next, I glued all those strips into one solid blank, which would create the herringbone pattern I was after. Now that the blank was ready, it was time to get started on the actual guitar. For this guitar, I'm using a kit from my friend Tim Sway, which includes all of the hardware as well as a router template. I started by attaching a paper template for the shape of the guitar to a piece of masonite. After screwing on the provided router template and drilling some starter holes with a Forstner bit, I used my router and template bit to route out the holes for the pickups. From this point on, I just had to cut out my desired body shape and sand the edges. Before removing the paper template, I made sure to score the center line with my Leatherman so that I could reference it later. Before I could do anything else, I had to clean up my blank of pattern plywood. I tried my best to flatten both sides using a belt sander, and then I cut the piece to size on the table saw. After cutting out the rough shape of the guitar on the bandsaw, I attached the template using blue tape and CA glue. It was now time to start routing out the shape of the guitar. For this I used a small template router bit which is meant for guitar making. There's a link in the description to the one I used. I 
then had to switch templates to the one that had the hole for the neck pocket. I now had to route the cavities for the pickups and the pocket for the neck. These pockets have very specific depths, so I started by using a Forstner bit and checking with calipers. Once I routed out the pockets, I removed the template and checked to make sure the neck fit well, which it did. It is now time for me to make the back panel to cover the electronics cavity. First, I resawed an offcut of patterned plywood and decided to try planing it flat, which seemed to work well. I know it's not good practice to run end grain through the planer, but it worked just fine. I then carefully attached the piece to the template, making sure that the pattern would line up with the body. After shaping the cover, it was now time to route the electronics cavity. I started by using the template that I made to route the innermost cavity, and then I used Tim's provided template to route the outer area. The result is a clean cavity with a perfectly offset lip. Next, I laid out all the electronics and marked the locations so that I could drill some holes. I then had to use this extra long drill bit to drill holes from the pickup cavities to the electronics cavity. And this was probably the most sketchy part of the build. Everything worked out alright though, and I was left with these two holes for the pickup wires and one for the ground. It was now time to shape the body, so I started off with a half inch round over bit and crossed my fingers that there would be no chip out. I was lucky once again and there was no chip out, so I was able to move on to sanding. I thought now would be a good time to work on the neck. The neck I'm using comes with Tim's kit and all I had to do was cut out the shape of the headstock. I used the provided template to mark the locations of the holes for the tuners. This made everything a lot easier and took away any guesswork. First I drilled a pilot hole all the way through and then I drilled from both sides using a Forstner bit to eliminate tear out. After shaping the headstock, I applied some wipe on poly which matched the finish of the neck pretty well. I then drilled holes for where the neck would be screwed into the body. I thought it would be cool to attach the back cover using magnets for a super clean look. After adding the magnets to the body, I used some paint to transfer the location onto the back cover. I was then able to easily install the magnets in the right place.
It was now time to finish the guitar. For a finish, I'm using a two-part catalyzed spray finish, which is commonly used in automotive applications. There's a link in the description. After the finish had dried, it was time to add some of the hardware. First, I used some foil tape to shield the electronics cavity. I then inserted two potentiometers, one for the tone and one for the volume. After adding the three-way switch, I installed the tuners. For this guitar I decided to buy my own pickups which have maple faces. This is purely because I wanted everything to match. I installed the bridge first making sure that the two outer strings were in alignment with the fretboard. I then screwed on the pickups and wired it up. And with that, this build was complete. Before I show you the final shots of the finished guitar, I'd like to give a huge thank you to my friend Tim Sway for helping me out with this project. If you're thinking of building a guitar, I would highly recommend getting one of Tim Sway's kits. They come with all the components you need to build a guitar, including the neck, as well as step-by-step -step videos which make the whole process a lot easier. So if you want to build a guitar, I added a link to his kits in the description below. Definitely go check them out. Thanks, Tim. I think that's going to wrap it up for this build. If you like this video, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button. If you want to see what I do in the next video, you're welcome to subscribe and be sure to turn on those post notifications so you don't miss it. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.